Yes, um, obviously. Uh, we've got a short work week we're dealing with here, so our Sunday schedule adjusted a little bit. Um, uh, put the uh, game behind us on Sunday mornings as a staff. Uh, uh, saw a lot of really good things. Obviously saw some things we need to need to correct on all three phases. Um, the things that we uh, saw were, 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 were uh, um, some things that not really shown up in the past, just some, some detailed things. I think in particular, two quarterbacks were playing really, really well and they were hard to defend. Um, the numbers out of DAC were unbelievable and you could see what had happened on film and then also caught a couple breaks. Um, thought our guys came in at halftime, adjusted very, very well really in all three phases um, to what was going on. Unfortunately, they got a little momentum back in the fourth quarter on offense and, and did some really uh, good things down the stretch that obviously uh, uh, ultimately gave them the win. Wish we could have executed better uh, in the field goal uh, on the last attempt. Um, you know, that was really a breakdown in protection. It wasn't anything to do with the kick. I should say this, he really didn't know about the kick because the ball got taken off off his foot basically before it ever really got in the air. So Cole had really hit well. It was the best he had hit in pregame warm-ups. I, I know our coaches that were watching him uh, right when I came outside uh, had felt he was hitting as, as well uh, on Saturday as he had since since uh, since coming here. So um, unfortunately, we didn't get to see the results of that, and that's very, very disappointing because that's basic – uh, field goal protection inside out. Um, they just had a, a player beat our, our, our right end across his face, which took the ball uh, uh, out of play very, very early. So that's very disappointing. I think I told our, go our guys yesterday, I met with our kids while our coaches were still working on uh, working on our Missouri prep. And, uh, you know, for the first time since I've been here, I was just legitimately just really pissed off um, Saturday night and Sunday just, just because it was a, a game that, you know, we've lost some games here, but I don't know if we've ever been in a position that we could say, hey, that was that was truly one that um, uh, they played well. Uh, guaranteed Mississippi State played very, very well, but we could have easily had that game be in a win column, and you can't give away a win. And um, we just need to execute at the last minute on a chip shot field goal, and, and it would be there. But we didn't, despite everything that happened. So we'll move ourselves forward. We'll make the changes we need to make. Uh, injury-wise, we've stayed very, very uh, – uh, healthy uh, guys that got injured during the course of the game came back and of course we're going to have to uh, get them through rehab during the course of the week uh, to get them back out there on Friday but I don't think any motivation will be needed any extra motivation to get those guys out there a senior day uh, a group of seniors that are really loved it's a small number uh, but a number that I think our guys really really stand behind on offense and on defense the numbers are low but our guys respect them so uh, I don't expect that to be a problem uh, we'll We'll kind of adjust our schedule today. We'll go out late. Uh, we usually don't go out on Monday nights, but tonight uh, after classes are done, we can't get our hands on our guys till about 6.30 or 7 at night. We'll treat it a little bit like a Tuesday practice, not as long, but we'll get good work done. Uh, Wednesday, tomorrow, they have school all day, uh, so we can't get with them until about 2.33 in the afternoon, so it'll be like a normal time on, on Tuesday, but it'll be similar to a Wednesday practice, and then Thursday, I'm sorry, Wednesdays, uh, no school, so we can practice a little earlier in the day. We'll move it up, um, get through uh, what would we consider a Thursday practice, um, uh, have our Thanksgiving dinner after that, have a chance for kids to get home if they can, and then Friday, uh, I'm sorry, Thursday will be um, uh, a day that we kind of compare to our, our, our normal game week Friday where we bring them to the hotel, sequester them, and kind of just get them up on, and ready to roll on, on Friday afternoon. Can you let guys go home Thursday? If they're not playing in the game. If, yeah, the non travel not I got 120 guys. So there's 50 guys that I don't want to be the, uh, well, Grinch steals Christmas, who steals Thanksgiving, whoever he is. I don't want to be that guy. Uh, so we've actually uh, uh, had, had, had a little bit of experience now playing in these, in these Thanksgiving games, so it's actually good. Given the, the heartbreak that you talked about the other day, I wonder what film was like yesterday just watching it and if you remain confident in the, in the play calling there and the sequence at the end uh, with the runs leading up to the field goal. Um, yeah, no, we really, I thought uh, offensively played a really good game. Um, scored 50 points. It's going to be good. Um, you know, the, the um, last series, you got you to think about what's, what's on the clock. I don't need to go into great detail, but um, they, they've had a lot of success scoring, and they had two timeouts. Um, when they took a timeout and wanted to stop the clock, uh, it was apparent to me that they were stopping it because they obviously wanted to have time on the clock if we, when we kicked the field goal. So, um, we ran the ball, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, didn't get yardage, but we got the position on the field we wanted. We, bought, we wanted the ball middle to left, um, uh, wanted to make sure that we had a chance to win the game. Um, if you, if you, you know, 
look at the, at the at the results of what can happen. You felt good about keeping the ball on the ground and the guys in hands and making a, a routine field goal. Um, we haven't been great on field goals, but from that distance, uh, we've been all right, especially uh, as of late. So I uh, wouldn't change anything else. You know, it's going to be, it might be Gary Pinkle's last game if they don't win. What, what kind of effort are you expecting from Missouri? What, what are your thoughts about Gary? Well, um, uh, obviously, Gary's a tremendous coach. He's recruited all those kids. He's been there a long time for all the right reasons. He does things, everything uh, above board. I just I just love, um, I'm sure you guys have all interviewed him. I, I've only been around him now about, you know, going to my third year. I just uh, when people ask him questions, he's very, very um, direct on what he says. He believes in it. He doesn't waver in it. Um, people ask about injuries. He has a comment. If he asks about anything else in his program, he has the answer because he knows it through and through. And I. I love that as a coach. I have an utmost respect for him. I know a lot of coaches that have worked for him. Dave Steckel is a longtime D coordinator that left a year ago. Just uh, talked about how much uh, he enjoyed working for him. Kids talk about how they love playing for him. So they'll obviously be very, very motivated on Friday. Um, um, whether it's his last game or not, I know it's his last game at Mizzou for a while until he gets everything he needs to get under control. But we'll we'll definitely uh, have a few words before the game and and. Uh, Wish him the best of luck on everything moving forward. Is this, is this a kind of game where if you weren't playing him, you'd be rooting for him? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, uh, Coach Penkel probably has that uh, from a lot of coaches just because he's he's a, a very genuine guy, very, very self-made. Uh, uh, you know, he didn't he didn't uh, do anything. He just – everything he's gotten, he's gotten on his own, you know, and his tradition, his history, his background, uh, being with Don James, all the, all the stuff that he's earned is pretty cool. No, um, you know, especially uh, you know the ball is pretty much in the middle of the field to the left. Uh, we we had pressure coming up the middle, and and to be quite honest, I think the kid that blocked it was even shocked he was there. Um, he didn't block it; he blocked it pretty much with his body, not his not his hands, and and hadn't had any issues. Um, again, we protect inside out. That's the most fundamental thing to deal with with field goal protection. And, Unfortunately, we had to move some people around. Mitch Laven had played the opposite end spot uh, the week before when he broke his foot. We had to move Skipper into that side, uh, which which moved uh, uh, Volsky over to the other side. And uh, although I'd been there during the course of the game, there hadn't been a lot of a lot of a lot of prep time there. You talked about the, the seniors this week and this being it. Um, Regarding Brandon specifically, I mean, what he's been through. How much does this mean to? to and this is it. How, I, I, ever since you've been here, he's been your guy. So. I tell you what, I, I, just even like when we uh, uh, took the ball over on the nine yard line or 10 yard line on Saturday and had whatever time there was on the clock, um, it, it just was one of those moments as a coach I flashed to that to see the look in his eye and his smile and like a little giddiness going out on the field versus, you know, maybe the, the previous, uh, uh, not, 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 it just it kind of evolved from three years ago where you're like, holy cow, I'm going to go do this to, okay, now what am I going to do? And, What's the call is going to be, and how am I going to execute it? Um, was really, uh, really rewarding. And then I think he even got down to, you know, we said, "Hey, we get the ball inside of 20. If we get the ball inside of 15, we feel really good about where we're at." And uh, that's the the mark he had made, and that's what our coaches knew, and that's what our our players knew. And we kicked it in the action, and that's what I just you just get so frustrated with the result. But uh, for BA on Saturday, um, his dad being a coach, being from Fayetteville, from uh, being a Older brother of a younger brother on the team. To there are just so many storylines that buy into something special that's pretty, pretty unique and, and pretty genuine and something I've never been a part of. You know, I've never uh, had a had a had a coach's son that I have worked with now be uh, our starting quarterback, and it, it means a lot. They, they revealed the trophy today, so does yeah. it feel like it's going to be a trophy game? Yeah, like it does, and we'll make it that way. You know, we do all right in trophy games. Um, uh, I'd, I'd asked, given Basil some heat all the way through. You know, I knew he had a hand in in, in uh, creating it, and uh, I haven't seen it live, but I saw the I saw the pictures of it this morning. Um, pretty cool. Um, heavy soccer, four foot, one eighty. You know, sounds like a midget three technique, but but I, I, I like um, I like I like the looks of it. Looks classy, and uh, hopefully he's got a lot of history and something we can build upon. Have you guys got a thing built where you can have it and the boot displayed together? Yeah, I had to think about. Got to get things first. Um, I think the the uh, um, the thing that we at, at previous institutions that I've been at is you get a little little trophy case set up and you always have them on display because people go crazy for those things. It, it really is uh, amazing. I mean, our players love it and there's a uniqueness to it to battle for a trophy, but 
Uh, it means so much to the fan base and, and uh, uh, has a lot of carryover throughout the year that you, you definitely would want something like that. In terms of knowing their personnel, I mean, three tours to the West now, you've got some stuff going with each of those West teams. But now from Missouri standpoint, familiarity with personnel and stuff like that, is it starting to gather up a little bit? I think so. Um, you know, obviously the storyline of Coach and, and uh, everything he's going through right now takes a takes – a, uh, Precedence, you know, and as, as it should, uh, uh, with all that it goes into it. I think we recruit against Missouri quite a bit, you know, to be quite honest. Uh, of all the schools in the um, in the East, you know, obviously when we're in Florida, we recruit against Florida quite a bit, but uh, in Atlanta, we'll go against Georgia. But I would say for everything in Texas, you know, St. Louis, Kansas City, uh, in Louisiana even, um, and he, I mean, even here in Arkansas, we we go against Missouri quite a bit, I think, because we, we both look for the same type of players, you know. Kids that do things right, kids that uh, are project type kids that are development uh, players that uh, uh, do well in our programs, and and uh, I always considered it kind of a badge of honor when when we got in a recruiting battle with them and and, and were able to have success. Defensively, just how how where do they stack up with some of the teams in the league? You know, uh, very good up front. Uh, they've had some guys get injured, a little bit nicked up, but they've got uh, two or three guys up front that could probably start with anybody in this league. I think their linebackers run really. Obviously, we've got one that makes a, a lot of plays. Their back end's good. Um, uh, for a first year, uh, you know, for, for a coordinator to come in and do the things they've continued to do, and um, they just play hard on defense. You know what I mean? They they play really physical. They 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 uh, they very very seldom get out of position. They don't give up a lot of big plays. Um, uh, it's 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 one that you get a lot of respect for when you when you watch them on film. But their offense, you know, they've had to go to lock with Mock getting mm -hmm. suspended. What are you seeing out of lock? I mean, they really struggled to score. And yeah. Get the ball. You know, um, you know, I know there's a dry stretch there for a while, but as you get with good coaches, you know, his last two games have been the better two games. Um, uh, I think the the fact that we have to defensively uh, rebound from uh, a game where we gave up some yardage and gave up some plays uh, to fit the mode of what we got this week. Different quarterback, you know, obviously Pratt. Dak was a runner and, and uh, presented some different challenges than, than, than Locke does. But uh, we've got to play the game plan. I'm sure they're going to go up tempo on us um, as fast as they possibly can. And we'll prepare that during the course of the week. Do you have to kind of rebuild your defense's confidence after a game like, like last week? You know, um, I get the question, but I don't really believe so. We've we played good defense. Uh, they play good defense here this year. Um, uh, I think what we have to do is really get everybody to lock in and, and and, and understand that, in, you know, with 11 guys on the field, they're going to find that, that one. You can't be that one that's got your eyes in the wrong spot. I thought Dak was very opportunistic on about three or four, especially scoring plays where everybody was doing their job and one guy wasn't, and he'd find that guy. And, and, and to be quite honest, uh, uh, he presents a challenge in this conference like no other quarterback as far as being able to run the ball and throw the balls as accurate. I think that's the biggest jump he's made. Uh, um, I really believe that you probably – had your two best quarterbacks out there on the field Saturday in this in this league battling it out, and uh, it was it was it was a, a for a pure fan standpoint, it was probably a lot of fun to watch those guys. When you look back on the season, you guys have been in some just crazy games, some crazy. shootouts. How, how are you going to kind of view what how it's supposed to take? You know, I didn't really think about it until someone said, "Hey, it's your third overtime." You know, coming out of that that last one. Um, I mean, I don't think I've ever been in a game where we scored. 40 points or, or you know and not and not won it uh, I just so so mind-boggling but uh, on the same account I'm I'm, I'm proud of our team in regard regards do we win as a team we lose as a team you know we got done with it and there wasn't anybody you know pointing fingers or anybody it, it was just hey there was a lot of very very quiet locker room probably the quietest it's ever been um, but on the same account Herb's had a lifting group in this morning at six o'clock and I think there was 22 of our two deep guys in there, and he said it was probably the best, uh, best 6 a.m. workout we've had all year. You know, and and uh, it just shows the resiliency of these guys. I got after them pretty good last night uh, in a meeting, but I tried to bring them back and and talk about um, expect sex, expecting success. And and that was my point was it, it was probably one of the first times where we've had failure where everybody in that room expected to win that game. Yes, you know, on Saturday and. And that's a unique place to get to because now, now you can build off of that um, and, and, and show how much you got to give to make that happen. You mentioned uh, the other night about the felt you undersigned on linebackers. Was that because of stocking other positions or some guys you counted on? You know, I, I've been, uh, because we're getting so close to jumping, you know, I just basically this morning locked down my schedule for next week. Um, 
we'll leave out on Sunday and I've got everything locked up till Friday morning of where I'm going, um, really starting in the middle of the country and going, going east and going west and come back to center. Um, so I, I, th that first week, it really makes you think about wh you, where your priorities need to be and guys that are signing early. And because when we came here, we were so deficient offensively in a type of players that our offense needed to have. Um, you know, I, I oversigned a wide receiver, uh, oversigned a little bit at, at an offensive line, um, oversigned a tight end, um, and, and uh, defensive line in particular because D-line jumped out to me right away. Did a little bit at, say, at, at DB as well um, and, just, and, and just numbers. Uh, I wish I'd put two or three more players over the last two years in the, in the linebacker uh, depth chart just because we, we just are so thin there right now. Um, uh, and especially losing a couple guys to injury magnified the problem times a thousand. Isn't there also, I mean, a lot with linebacker, you've had some attrition, yeah. losing player. I mean, you signed three or four in every class. Yeah, yeah. you know, we lost, uh, you know, obviously um, Ramsey was a big, you know, Ramsey sticks out my mind because he's a guy that could play, but we just couldn't get it together, uh, you know, off the field. Um, there's some other guys that, that, that maybe we had signed and hoped that maybe they'd convert into a linebacker and haven't. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, there's that case in all of them. But uh, some guys were listed at linebacker and weren't ever going to be linebackers, too. Uh, just being pissed off and all. We talked about the wild games you've had this season. Are you, is it wearing down, on, wearing on you at all? Or are you <laughs> still totally upbeat, ready? Yeah, ready? I just, I'm, I'm serious. It was like, a, you know, like I got done with a game and, and I got to compose myself to deal with our players first. And then I walk into you guys and then I walk into a, a radio sta a interview and I walk into a TV interview and, and then uh, I go back over and it's like 1130 or whatever. And, and I got to, I'm just dying. So I go watch the, the field goal clip. You know, and then I just just go through the roof, and um, my wife tried to calm me down a little bit, but I was I was like a little bit beside myself Saturday night, and um, had a very good buddy in town. And we just kind of sat there Saturday night, and then Sunday morning I get up, and it's kind of more of the same. And I watch the film, and and it, and it kind of reflected back that it was like the first time I've ever been like that in a long time. I remember when we lost uh, the Rose Bowl um, to to uh, TCU and Oregon back to back years by a field goal, and and those teams, one was two, number two in the country in the rankings, and the other one was like three or four. And just, just realize you were that close to beating somebody of that stature. Um, and Mississippi State, I, I know they're, they're an eight and three football team now, but I, what I was really revved up about last week is they had won more games than anybody in this league, just them in Alabama over a, a certain you know three year, four year window. So I, I knew if we beat them, what it meant to, to me. Uh, it meant that we're on the verge of, of winning a lot more than losing. And, and you know, we've, we're three and one on the road, and we're whatever. We're four and three now, and five and three sounds a lot better than than you know four and four. But it sounds a heck of a lot better than zero oh and eight uh, and and stuff like that. Uh, two and six. So well, I know where we're going. It's just I get impatient, and uh, uh, you know it's going to hurt uh, to lose some of these seniors. But we got. I, I was sitting there Saturday, and I, I do this little thing on game day where I call up. We, we, we get together, we say a few things, we say a prayer, and then I call up our game day meal, and I go seniors first, and there's like nine guys got up, you know, and there's just not a lot of guys. And then I'll say juniors, and, and like half the room gets up, and you look in that group, and there's a lot of, a lot of really good players. Like, so the NFL allows you to, to sign or, or get five guys evaluated. I have to like sit down and talk about who we're going to get evaluated, because I, I got more of the guys that want to do that probably. And then, um, you know, I called the NFL League office today and talked about Jay Will because, you know, here's a guy that he technically can't go through that process, but he's a guy that needs that process because he still has another year of eligibility here, you know, and I, I want to give him the right information. Um, and I'm also trying to prepare for Missouri and I'm trying to get recruiting. So I'm not frustrated. It's just it's that time of the year where as a head coach, you're like, I just need like three more days in a week, uh, you know, so um, it ain't going to happen. but. It's, it's fun to think about it. You said you, you, said you were steamed, so was it more than just the field goal protection? Yeah, just because I, I just, I mean, you know, we didn't play well in certain facets. Um, uh, I run punt return. I thought we had a great, great uh, PBR scheme that I only got one shot at, you know. Um, I wanted to set up a call and, and make another call. And uh, as a coach, I only get to run, well, I, only, I, I let myself run PBR and I really enjoy it, you know. It's like that's, that's how I get to game plan and, and get that coach fix that I need every week, and I only got one rep of that, and it's just disturbing, um, you know, and that's just what it was. But uh, I'm fine. I mean, I'm good. I mean, I love I, – I, I, it's so exciting. It sounds stupid to be, you know, um, uh, six and five and, and say it's exciting, but um, 
I guess I've been to other places where it's been a lot better than that, but it, it's just, you've created it here with your own hands and you've molded it. It's, 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 it's a lot of fun. Is it frustrating to score 50 points and then lose by one? Is that part of You can choose the adjective, it ain't fun. Whatever, whatever, whatever adjective you want. I, I, you know, I probably said a word I shouldn't use, I guess, uh, but um, it's, it's, it's one of those things that just, it's, it is what it is, and you see how it happened, and you saw how it played out. What you have to do is make sure you make corrections to hopefully never let it happen again. Um, it's going to be a great off season for us. I've already got two or three things in mind uh, for us uh, on the defense side and, and a couple on offense that I think will really benefit us to, uh, to dig our hands into. We'll have a little bit of, a, a little bit of introduction to that in the, in the, in the bowl prep. You know, um, I kept our uh, non-travel roster. You know, I got 50 guys that don't travel with us. Uh, we got 120 kids, so I kept those 50 after yesterday's uh, team meeting, and I just said, "Man, this is going to be a great month for you." You know, um, take care of your academics. We got guys with a, a couple guys that are in jeopardy that that have to get get right academically. But then, you know, I get unlimited practice with you guys. You know, I get I get unlimited practices with the development crew. We may have three or four freshmen or, or, or signees that that graduate early and could could do a tie did a year ago, come in and and practice with us during bowl prep, which is a lot. That, that's just like purely awesome. Um, so th it's really one of the more, December for a coach is probably one of the more, enjoy if you're going to a bowl game, is one of the more enjoyable times of your life. Do you feel like <clears throat> the issues with the pass defense can be addressed and turned around? And, and, pass uh, defense, you mean like, like Saturday? Defend, yeah, like defend against short passing situations. And, you know, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, uh, um, I don't know if short passing situations, long passing situations, intermediate. Uh, short runs, long runs, long and intermediate runs. Um, we, we uh, if we line up and we leverage the football, if we tackle efficiently and get everybody on the same page, we play really good defense. And I think our guys, uh, our guys are aware of that. And and um, at times they uh, do that very, very well. And when they do, um, they know why it happens. When they don't, they know why they, were, you know, the opposite happens. How emotional is senior day for for a coach? And this, uh, how would you, you say it's a small group? But how would you sum up this? this I'll, I'll never forget it. I mean, uh, um, uh, my first senior day as a head coach, I, I kind of just modeled after what I'd seen. Uh, even for what I began, to, I, all the head coaches I ever worked for worked for Hayden Fry. So my senior day with Hayden Fry was eerily similar to the, all the other senior days I went and witnessed at Kansas State what I witnessed at, at Wisconsin with Coach Alvarez. So I kind of molded it after that. I changed a few things uh, as far as try to make it more enjoyable for their families. Our, our senior parents, they get spoiled. They come in that day. They get a lot of gifts. Everything that the NCAA allows us to do, we, we do certain things. We'll address them. And then we have each kid to have his moment, you know, that, to, to run out. And um, even though I didn't recruit uh, some of these kids, I recruited some of them kind of like my first senior day. Uh, I worried about the emotion of the game. We needed to win it to to to, to get a better bowl in place. And um, I remember Joe Thomas, who ended up being the uh, fourth pick in the NFL draft, uh, has played in every bowl, senior, Pro Bowl since uh, since then, and is a, is just a man's man. You know, he's a hunter. He's a uh, and he was he was crying like a little schoolgirl, and I, I was like. I was like breaking down, and I'm like, oh gosh, he's going to be a wreck. He's not going to be able to play, and played probably one of the best games I've ever seen uh, a left tackle play in college football. So that's when it kind of became apparent to me that if you let them have their moment, kind of let them just have a couple minutes to, to, to gather themselves, uh, they'll be that way. Last year, uh, Trey and, and uh, Martrell and some of those guys at the end were really, really tough, tough moments for me, but um, they went out and played incredible football. So. Uh, I, I, I did the pecking order today of, of the way the guys are going to get introduced, so I know the crescendo I'm going to have to some of our, our players. But somebody's got like Nick Thomas Smith is going to get introduced. He's a walk-on linebacker who's he's just awesome. So it's hard for players and coaches if you do it right. Beyond you talked about linebackers, I was curious, Kendrick Jackson, what his future is. Yeah, Kendrick is a you know. Anybody else that could help yeah, um, you know Kendrick was was doing really well at Mike. Um, we, in, in retrospect, uh, if we had known the injuries we were going to have, I probably would have played him. I just didn't want to take the uh, take him away from the offense in the eighth game of the year. But um, Kendrick was doing really well as a Mike linebacker. He probably will move back there during bowl prep, um, uh, just because fullback's been good for him. But I think we got some better options coming in, so uh, Kendrick will do that. Um, uh, uh, 
Austin Cantrell has played linebacker. I, I, I get it. Uh, we off, we asked that question. Vernon was trying to get an audition uh, with him, but we had made a decision to redshirt him. So um, he'll, he'll he'll pop into that tight end H back. I don't I don't see him moving there. Um, you know, we have junior college options as well, some freshmen uh, coming in. But uh, that's it. Somebody asked him about Keon. Yeah, come out with the seniors, or is he? No. Uh, um, so he's coming back. Yeah. He, he uh, Keon and I've had several conversations. Um, everything. Uh, you know what, Keon's matured so much, and uh, I think he he knew uh, where he needed to have his mind right, and, and uh, he's actually going to graduate here uh, in December, and he's been loaded down with that. And um, I think him and Jay Will, I felt bad for Jay Will. Jay Will uh, was in the training room the other day, and uh, you know I, I know he's frustrated because he he wants to be kind of out there and more involved, and uh, he just hasn't been able to get out there that way, but. Uh, uh, Keon, I think, will we'll definitely come back, and Jay will probably, unless we get some radical information. He is keeping his ears open. We had a conversation for about 45 minutes last week that I was going to get him as much information. I talked to the, I think I started to tell that story to the league office today. They're going to let him sit down and talk to some, some, some upper level management people in the NFL and, and scouting and try to give him some real information that's not from my mouth, not from the mouth of an agent, but from the people that are going to make the decisions on draft day. Uh, and hopefully that'll happen. He's coming back. Is that what you were just saying? No, no. I just I want to give him the option. It, okay. The option is there, and you know, it, it, last year his pre-draft grade came back as a as a three to a to a five. You know, one had him at a two, but most of them had him at a four or five. Um, so the thing I just said to him is, "Jay, will take my head coach hat out of it. I love you. Uh, I want you to have success in life." Um, but what what people don't realize, you know, like one of the things that we'll go and do when we're talking to these juniors about. You know, if you're if you're projected to be a, a fourth or fifth round guy as a junior, chances are you could be a second rounder higher. As a senior, you know, because of the way the NFL lays out contracts now three or four years out at a time, if you get locked into that four year contract in the sixth round, making, you know, very small dollar, I mean it's good money, don't get me wrong, compared to what a first or second round guy can get in a year, you may lose, you know, like uh, I'll just use Darius Filon. Darius you know, went in the sixth round, was it last year, or seventh round? Uh, if he would have came back and been a, even a second rounder or a third rounder, he, he probably lost somewhere to four to six million dollars in guaranteed money uh, just by that decision. And sometimes staying in school for a year is a pretty good deal, um, you know, especially now with the Jones Center and free food all the time. Um, it, it, can, it can come back to really pay off. I want, I want, I want what's best for Jay Will. I, pre I appreciate what you're saying, um, but I, I just, you guys are around him. You just want him to have the best decision. Well, my biggest fear is if he if he jumps into it. You know, he's already got the Senior Bowl invite, and he's not able to show everything he can show. I know he's a second round or higher player, but I'm not going to be making that decision. My hate, my my, what I've explained to him and what we've talked about is you'd hate for him to fall something way down the line um, to fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh to free agency. When, when, when a year ago, he could have came out and been a second or third rounder. Um, and those same things could exist, possibly if he came back and did it again. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.